Mm-hmm. Morning, guys. We are on day eight. I took a little bit of a day off yesterday and I edited days one to six, and that should be on YouTube already. So if you're just seeing this video now, you can watch my first, well, the whole hair transplant and the first seven days of recovery. I'll leave a link in the description box to the last video. Yeah, this is day eight of recovery. My head is scabbed, well, it's nice and scabbed here, and the hairs are hopefully um, anchored into my head now. The back of my head is looking pretty normal as well. The back of my head has been super itchy, um, like the whole time. Uh, that's been stopping me from sleeping really. The back of my head is very sore as well. In fact, I've not felt anything from the front of the head. It's more the back of the head that's the problem. Um, but pushing through, can't wait for day 14 when I can wash my hair properly and start wearing hats again. Today, um, I usually get my eyebrows laminated at a place in Spitalfields at uh, London Liverpool Street called Selfish. Uh, it's like a little nail and nail salon, eyebrow salon. Um, but because I can't really leave the house, um, well, I don't really want to leave the house at the moment. I bought an at-home kit, which I tried once in COVID and it went very badly and I ended up with giant brown blocked eyebrows. Um, but I'm going to be very careful with the tint this time, not leave on very long and make sure I put Vaseline around the surrounding area so I don't tint them for too long. So that is going to be today's task to keep me busy. So hopefully I'll see you in a bit with fresh laminated eyebrows. This is round one. Just put the lifting agent on my brows for eight minutes. Not gonna lie, I felt like a bit of a monster this past week. Like I've had spots all over my face. I've had my scabby hairline. I've not been able to shower properly. <laughs> so yeah, I just felt a bit gross. So I thought I would make myself feel better and do my eyebrows. This usually costs 70 pounds a time. So if I can actually do it well myself, I'd actually be saving myself a lot of money, so. Okay, done. I feel like they're not bad. They always look a bit crazy for the first, I can't get them wet for 24 hours. I've just tinted them, well I've laminated them and then tinted them. Um, I've just not plucked them. Um, well, I have like tidied them up, but obviously when I get them done, uh, the place in Spitalfields, they kind of shape them. So they look a bit sluggish at the moment, but after 24 hours, once I can wet them again, uh, they'll be a lot less crazy and less darker. So they need to kind of stay like this, fanned out position to kind of, they've basically been permed and they need to stay in straight so that they continue to be straight for the next like six weeks. Obviously doing my eyebrows now as well, I'm getting a proper look at my hairline and it's so scabby and flaky. It's so tempting to just like take the scabs off, but we're only on day eight and I need to wait till day 14. So we're not anywhere near yet. Good morning guys, it is Sunday. It's day nine of recovery now. I just washed, well, I washed the front of my hair with a jug with soapy water and I washed the back of my head with baby shampoo. Like I put the shampoo straight on because the British Hair Clinic said I could do that. Uh, after my first hair wash, they said the back looks really good. However, the only cause of concern at the moment, like, like last night was another awful night's sleep and it's the back of my head. I'm like, it looks fine. It's just so itchy and it kind of like stings. And I think that um, it's just dry. Like my whole head is like just dry and itchy. And I think that is obviously gonna happen because of like the trauma from the whole procedure and then like the recovery as well and not being able to like wash my hair properly. I'm gonna be so happy from day 14 because then I can properly like rub these scabs off and like wash my hair properly and lie on the pillow sideways. That's another thing I miss as well, it's going to the gym. Like I have been out to the shops a couple of times, like grab some little bits and I've not been very like self-conscious because I feel like only if you look at me properly, then you can see that there's like scabs and stuff on my head. But if I was just walking past you on the street, you'd probably think I just had a shaved head or had like a bumpy head or something. But I don't really care about what other people think anyway. That's why I've left the house a few times anyway and not 
really giving it a thought. The gym thing is that I'm not allowed to like do strenuous exercise or anything that makes me sweat or like sense blood pressure blood pressure to my head. Um, but after two weeks, that's absolutely fine. So yeah, so we're at day nine now, Sunday. So from Friday, I go back to the gym and just start living normally again. Um, but obviously from that day is when hairs might start falling out naturally and then they will regrow. So I might look how I did at the start, if you know what I mean. So it like goes backwards before it goes forwards, but it's all part of the process. Also, I just uploaded the first part of this vlog on my YouTube channel. And honestly, the support from you guys on my Instagram and YouTube and everything has been so overwhelming. Like I'm so, so appreciative of everyone's kind words and messages. Comments, it's been amazing to speak to people that have had it done. It's been amazing to speak to people that want to get it done, like give them advice and tips. Um, so honestly, if you ever have any questions, please just like message me on Instagram or comment here on YouTube because I just am happy to help. And that's all I have to update you on. Here's another close up of my head. I'm really, really happy with how it's looking at the moment though. Like I can see the vision. I cannot wait for the day when I have like longer hair that I can like gel back and like swoop back and not be concerned about like my crazy hairline from before. Um, yeah, so I, at the moment I'm Compared to last Sunday, last Sunday I was feeling very sorry for myself. Now I feel like I've I've gotten over that. I've ridden that wave and we're at the end of the feeling sorry for myself now and I'm feeling in a much better place. Uh, me and Scott are gonna make a Japanese bake. The actual name of it is something like, I think it's Doria. It's like sushi rice, um, Japanese curry, topped with cheese and breadcrumbs. Obviously starting the new year with a health kick, clearly. And then we're gonna watch um, Monarch, which is like the Godzilla series on Apple TV. Here, speaking of Godzilla, I can literally hear his footsteps coming through the house and it's Scott. Godzilla! I thought you were on the phone. No, I'm talking to the internet. Um, I'm talking to the internet, I'm just telling them we're gonna have Doria and then watch Godzilla, uh, Monarch. Yeah. And then you can hear your footsteps and I said, you're Godzilla. Oh, I also watched RuPaul's Drag Race season 16, episode one, and I am obsessed. I love Dawn. So much. I like Dawn and um, Mirage. They're my faves at the moment. So I told you this is what we're gonna make, <laughs> and here it is in all its glory. It's very unhealthy, obviously. Breadcrumbs, mozzarella, cheddar, uh, Japanese curry with beef, and then sushi rice. It is delicious. Good morning, guys. It's day 11. I just had, it's like 7 a.m. I just had a shower and washed my hair. Still on the front, like the baptism, but on the back normally with like shampoo and stuff. You see the scabs are starting to like slowly fall away. And my hairs here, what that were shaved down, are growing back as well. So I think it's gonna, and once the scabs are gone, yeah, I'm really excited to see what it will look like. I'm thinking of doing a Q&A for this vlog. <laughs> so but I'm gonna ask on Instagram today for people to write questions of just what questions they have, what answers they want to know about having a hair transplant, um, and then I can answer it, answer them tomorrow for you guys on here. Once I have, I'll keep it 24 hours for all the answers, for all the questions to come in, and then we'll do a little Q and A. Hello guys, it is day, what day am I on? Um, seven, it's day 12, and I'm heading out into the town center Nothing, nothing much happened yesterday. Um, also, nothing is happening today either. My head is looking quite scabby. I got so many questions from the Q&A from you guys yesterday as well, so I'll do that tomorrow because um, I just want to let it do 24 hours and let everyone ask their questions. There are some questions that I've been asked like multiple times, so I'll definitely answer as many as I possibly can. Keeping in mind though, I've only just had this done, so I don't know, like, some people are like asking about stuff that I would only know in like six to 12 months, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I'll answer as many as I possibly can tomorrow. I have to go, yeah, into the town centre now, just pick up some bits. Um, this is the first time I've got like, dressed, dressed for a few days now, feels a bit weird, um, but nice. Good morning guys, it's day 14. So today is the day where I get rid of these scabs. So I'm gonna wash my hair properly now and then do a little Q&A for you guys to round off the recovery experience. So, see you after my shower. Hello guys, it is 
day 14 and I've just had my hair washed. For the first time it felt euphoric to actually get like shampoo and like rub it into my head. Um, so as you can see, the transplanted area is still looking a little bit pinky, just a tiny bit. So I've just washed all the scabs off and I did notice like the shedding phase has started. So after you've had your transplant and you've done your recovery, the hair will then start to fall out. But it's the follicle underneath that's what's important because like that hair will fall out. It's part of the process, it's called the shedding phase. That has, the hairs will fall out and then the hair will start to grow back naturally. So that's the phase that I'm in. So yeah, I can start living like a normal person as of from today. I can start wearing hats again and stuff like that. So I asked on my Instagram story um, what, and if you guys have any questions about the whole process just because I'm coming to the end of my recovery process so I just want to answer as many questions while it's fresh in my mind as possible. Obviously like six to 12 months down the line I'm going to do update videos here on YouTube as well as well posts on Instagram. Um, but I got like, I screenshotted like 20 pages of questions from you guys about the procedure, the aftercare, or like thoughts behind getting it done. A lot of the questions were the same, like the biggest one is how much does it cost? And I'll answer that at the end, give you the full tea. So let's start. I've made like a list and kind of not, it's in no particular order, but I feel like it makes more sense in this order. First question is what kind of hair transplant uh, did you have? And I had an FUE hair transplant. There is FUT and FUE. FUE is the most popular these days. Um, I think if you know someone that's had a hair transplant, they've probably had an FUE. It's where they take the individual follicles from the back of your head and fill in like the top or your hairline of your hair. Whereas I think the FUT one is where they take a strip of your skin with the hair in it and like put that strip onto your head. So I feel like that was common back in the day before the technology of FUE and now FUE is the most common way to get hair transplant. Uh, I think most places just do FUE because it's like, because it's like less painful, no stitches. Um, you can probably like craft hairline using that process as well. Um, if you're getting a hairline transplant, obviously I had a hairline one rather than like anywhere else on my head. Um, where did I get it done? I got it done at the British Hair Clinic. A lot of people asking me, how did I get to the decision of where to go? And uh, why didn't I go to a place like Turkey? Obviously a lot of people go to overseas to Turkey because of the good like prices over there. Um, going to Turkey never really entered my mind only because it's, a, it's like a surgical procedure, right? So I didn't want to go and get on a plane and do it in another country and then come home. Like it seemed a lot of faff. And being a social media influencer, I have over the years got many like invites and requests from places in Turkey to go and get it done for free. Um, but that really didn't, I don't know, it didn't feel right. Obviously I did get a discount from the British Hair Clinic um, to share content about the process online, um, but I didn't get it for free in any sense. The main reason for me going to British Hair Clinic is because a guy that I've known and followed for a, a long time now called Alex Harrison got his done at British Hair Clinic too. And I've seen his hairline over the last like six, seven years and just been really impressed with it. And I thought if I'm gonna go somewhere to get it done, I wanna go somewhere that I know does a good job and gives you like a natural looking hairline. So that is why, that's the main reasoning for choosing British Hair Clinic. There was no like other reason to be honest. I think if you know someone that's been somewhere or you follow someone and you've seen their hairline over the years, that is the best kind of like research that you can do in a sense because um, yeah, a good review or a good experience from someone that you know personally is the best recommendation that you can get. Like. Of course. At what age did I start seeing hair loss? So I've always had a widow's peak hairline since I was little. Um, my mum's a hairdresser and she used to shave my head up until like the age of 11. And I've always had this kind of like vampire widow's peak hairline. Um, like I said, about five years ago, I was, I was considering it five years ago. So I was thinking, mm, I don't really love my hairline. Um, but I didn't notice it was I didn't notice it proceeding or anything like that. So I was like, it's a big deal and it's something that I wanted to think about. I didn't want to just like spontaneously go and get a hairline transplant when I was like 25 for no reason. Um, so yeah, five, five years gone by and I was like noticing that I feel like it had receded ever so slightly even more. 
Not until I shaved my head in December of 2023 did I really see what my actual hairline looked like. So I've been dyeing my hair, playing with it, doing loads of stuff with my hair for like a long time now. <laughs> since, since I was like 13, 14, I've been like experimenting and doing loads of crazy stuff with my hair. Only when I shaved my head in December 2023 did I notice how actually, how much I kind of hated my hairline and how kind of like irregular it looked. And I don't know if that had like happened over the past five years or if it had always been like that because I'd never shaved my head to kind of know. And you won't ever know until you shave your head because I was gagged. When I saw my actual hairline, I was like, oh, that's what it looks like. So to answer that question, it's like, what age did I start seeing hair loss? I just, I started thinking about it when I was like 25. That's when it kind of like entered my train of thought. And also, I've been a full-time content creator since 2015, recording videos here on YouTube, taking pictures for Instagram. I'm constantly looking at myself and judging myself on how I look. Um, so I put myself under massive scrutiny, um, more so than other people would like. Do you take photos of yourself every single day and film videos and watch them back and edit them for years and years and years? Probably not. Um, so my view of myself is very, very like judgmental and um, I have to look at it all the time. That kind of answers the next question too. It's like, how did you know you needed it? Um, and it's not that I needed it, it's that I wanted it. I think that's a very important thing to state with this um, whole thing. It is a cosmetic surgery, it's vanity. It's not, uh, it's, well, it's for mental health as well, but I didn't need it. I just wanted it, if you know what I mean. Do I, did I need to shave my head? No, so you can actually leave your hair long and they just shave the parts uh, like at the back where they need to take the hair follicles from um, and then they put it into the front but they did say if I shave my head it would speed up the process um, so and I also wanted a change like I've had bleach blonde silvery grey hair since 2015 so I just wanted a bit of a change um, so I just buzzed it all off why not and um, so I thought it would speed up the procedure and it would give me a new look uh, and I actually quite like the shaved head. Once the hairline grows in, I will be appreciating it a lot more. What's the most, what, what is the most painful part of the procedure? The most painful part of the procedure is the anaesthetic. So they use local anaesthetic, so they just numb the back of your head and then they take the hair follicles out and then they numb the front of your head and they put the hair follicles back in. The injections of anaesthetic were the most painful because and it's not the needle or anything, it was just the anaesthetic liquid kind of stings. Um, but it lasted all of two minutes and then you can't feel anything in your head at all. Your head goes heavy and feels like a block of cement. Um, so yeah, the anaesthetic in the back and the front, but it's literally like less than two minutes. And then it's just kind of a lot of being uncomfortable uh, for whilst they're doing the procedure. You can watch TV during the second part. Uh, the recovery, uh, not sleeping. Not sleeping has been the most difficult part of the recovery. Basically, I, uh, you can't, you have to see, sleep sitting up for the first few nights. Uh, you can't touch the transplanted area like at all. You can't let it like rub on a pillow or anything like that. So I had this neck pillow here from Amazon, which I'll link in the description box. It's been kind of perfect, but it, I've grown to hate it now because like, yeah, I was using this to sleep like a vampire for the first five nights and then I got a bit sick of it. Um, but it's been really helpful like watching TV and stuff as well just to keep my head kind of propped up. <laughs> Um, and apart from that, I haven't really been in a lot of pain during the recovery process at all. Again, just uncomfortable. How long do you have to take off work? So it's one day procedure and then two weeks recovery. So that is all you will need. I think some people have gone back to work sooner, um, but they recommend not wearing hats until day 14. Um, or washing like your hair properly. Every clinic or every person I spoke to that's had a hair transplant that's had different recovery processes. Like some guys have been encouraged to wash their hair like twice a day from a certain point or some guys have been allowed to wear hats and stuff like that. Whereas mine said, um, do not wash the transplanted area for f with your hands for like 14 days um, and you cannot wear a hat till day 14. So I've just stuck to what they've said for the recovery process. Were you awake? Yes, but under local anaesthetic. Were you nervous? Yes, I was very nervous, <laughs> but I honestly shouldn't have been. It's a big deal, it is a big deal, but I think I was building like, building up the day of surgery in my head way too much when I could have just like chilled out a lot more. Is it permanent? Yeah, so the hairs that they've moved from the back of my head to the front of my head 
are permanent. Like these hair follicles are in my head and will start growing. However, I may start to lose hair from where I was losing hair before. Um, so they have prescribed me six months of uh, a drug called finasteride. I've spoken to a lot of people online, especially posting this on Instagram, a lot of guys have replied saying that they do take finasteride or have done for a long time. And then some people that haven't. Some people have had side effects, some people haven't. Um, there's loads of like mixed views of finasteride. Um, I'm supposed to start taking it from today, but I haven't fully decided whether I want to start taking it. It's a daily pill and it just, um, there's something, I can't remember the name of the uh, ingredient that stop. It's like stops you from losing any hair that you have already in your head. So they prescribe that. Um, I've kind of trailed off, but is it permanent? Yes, it is permanent. Does it grow back thin? That is another thing about the finasteride. You can also get a drug called minoxidil, which you like put onto your head. It's like topical um, and that kind of encourages the hair growth too. Uh, I have very, I naturally have very thick coarse hair. So I do not think that the hair here is gonna, when it fully grows back in like six to 12 months, I don't think it's gonna be thin. Um, we'll check back and we will see. Um, but I think it depends on your hair density already. I've never had thinning hair. So like when I was talking about my hairline before, it's never that it's been thinning and going away. It just wasn't there. Do you know what I mean? So there's like a difference. If you have thinning hair, then maybe it will grow back thin. But if you have thick hair, I don't think that it would grow back thinner than it usually would do. Because it's the same hairs, essentially. I'm also not a doctor, so please. <laughs> How much time did it take to do it? So I got to the British Hair Clinic. You can watch my vlog of the day. Um, it's part one, uh, getting a hairline transplant it's called. I'll put this in a playlist. Um, I got to the clinic at around 9.30 a.m. and then Scott picked me up and we left at like 8.30 p.m. It's a full day, it is a full on day. But it's one day, do you know what I mean? in the whole grand scheme of things. Someone said, what happened to the hair on the back of your head? Will there be gaps? So let me turn around so you can see. If you can see very well. Um, they mark off such a big area of your head and start taking the follicles from all over that essentially, if you've got a full head of hair at the back, you're not really gonna notice anything. Like when it starts growing back, it's not, you have so many hair follicles in the back of your head. Like they took 1,800 from the back of my head and that's what it's looking like now, just after, and it's fully shaved right now still as well. So it's gonna look different to when it like actually starts growing back. Um, so no, I don't think there will be gaps in the back of my head like at all. Is there a limit on how receded a hairline can be to get a transplant? Um, I don't know, cause I'm not a doctor, but um, I think it depends on how much hair you have to give to it. So like if I had, if I want, if I, if my hairline was super receded and I needed to cover this much area, they'd need to take that much from the back of my head. So if you have that much at the back of your head to give to here, then I'm sure it's fine. But if you don't have hair, enough hair here to put here, then you can't. So I think it depends on your donor, the, the donor area of hair. How many grafts, like I said, 1,800 were taken from the back of my head and implanted into the, front of my hair, like here and here. Do you get to choose how the hairline looks? Yes, so if you watch my previous uh, video, you can see the whole kind of procedure when the doctor, I have a brief, had a briefing with the doctor and then we spent time like drawing the hairline. I asked him to like change bits of how it would look. I trusted the doctor though because I wanted a natural hairline to how my hairline would actually look. Um, if it hadn't receded. Uh, whereas you can ask for whatever you want. <laughs> There's obviously a limit. You can't have hair where your muscles on your face are. So it has to be above the muscles for, that's like a, a rule. Cause you can't transplant hair into a muscle. So if you like scrunch your forehead, you can see like where your muscles are in your head. You can't have the hair there. So it has to be like a, a above and around that. And they were trying to stick to like a four finger rule for the hairline. And also my natural hairline came to here. So they didn't want to take it any lower than my natural hairline already did. So we kind of worked back from there. It's hard to see right now because 
of the the shedding um, and the shaved headness. <laughs> um, so maybe, uh, but yeah, you get to choose the hairline. That's what I'm saying. We like we were like drawing it on, rubbing it off, and drawing it back on, and going until I was happy. When does the transplanted hair fall out? So yeah, from now. So from two weeks onwards, I've washed the scabs away this morning, and I noticed all the little hairs in my hand, and they will continue to shed from from now until they start growing back. When can you wear a hat? From today, from day 14, I can start wearing a hat. I've got a new faux fur trapper hat that I've been dying to try on. So I will try that on today and see if that works. You have to sleep sitting up, yes, with the neck pillow like a vampire. But will you be able to bleach your hair later down the line? This was one of the first questions I asked when I had my initial consultation with British Hair Clinic. And they said yes, once the uh, hair starts has shed and started to grow back again, um, it's fine to do anything to bleach it like normal because it is just like your original hair. Um, I think there's a common misconception. I thought that too. I was like, oh, once I have a hair transplant, I can never bleach my hair again. That actually has no effect on the transplanted hair or anything like that. Um, so it will be fine. Have to take finasteride indefinitely. So yeah, I'm still on the fence with finasteride. Um, I think it's a very personal choice and like a case by case basis. Um, like I said, I know a lot of a lot of guys that are on it all the time and have suffered no side effects. There are some people that have told me that they have had side effects but then they went away and then there are some people that have told me that they had side effects and they've never gone away. Um, and also it's a commitment, it's like a daily pill for the rest of your life essentially um, because it's the drug, the ingredient that kind of stops your hair from falling out. Um, so they do recommend to take it. I'm going to talk to the British Hair Clinic today and see what they say. but. I also don't know if I want to start taking a pill for the rest of my life. Um, I know some people that have had two hair transplants and been on finasteride the whole time, but that have then needed another. Or people that have only had one hair transplant and don't take finasteride and haven't needed another. So it's very like case by case basis, it's not like one size fits all. Again, I'm not a doctor so please don't take my, my ideas about finasteride or even hair transplants as the gospel because I literally had it done two weeks ago, so I'm very new to this as well. What's something you wish you knew about the entire process? Um, I think the recovery was harder than I thought it would be. Just like not sleeping and being comfortable for two weeks. I, in my head before, like I was worried about the procedure, but actually the procedure was a walk in the park. Um, I wouldn't be worried about the procedure at all. I'd just be worried about those two weeks after where it's gonna feel like shit and you can't sleep. <laughs> Uh, and the big question which everybody asked, how much does it cost? You have to remember uh, getting it done here in the UK is obviously going to be more expensive than places like Turkey and stuff like that. Um, and it obviously depends on the amount of hairs, hair grafts, like follicle grafts that you need. And also it depends on a case by case basis for like, I feel like mine was on the more minimal side because I only needed 1,800 grafts. Um, where some people might need more grafts to fill in more areas of hair loss. But the full price of the procedure I got was £5,000 here in the UK at British Hair Clinic. But obviously, like I said, it's different for everyone. So please don't expect that yours should cost the same or, yeah, just like, I think it's different for everyone. Um, but yeah, so I hope that has answered all of your kind of questions. Like I said, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram, leave a comment on this video and I'll try and get back to you. Honestly, the love and support over on Instagram and here on YouTube has been insane. Like, thank you so much for coming along this journey with me. I'm obviously gonna keep you updated uh, as the months and years go by, um, give you feedback on everything or like what's been happening. If I do decide to take finasteride and stuff like that, I'll obviously let you guys know. Um, so please don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and follow along on Instagram and TikTok as well. Thank you so much for watching um, and I can't wait to start growing some hair. Bye guys.